name is Alan Banks. I work for Rowe Dental Laboratory, and six months ago we introduced Grammetry, an alternative to photogrammetry, a process that allows you to have 100% of the photogrammetry benefits, but with only 1% of the cost. What is Grammetry? A Grammetry is a way to have your iOS scanner scan full arch for implants with a special scan body. And in the past six months, we've completed about 2,000 cases. And in that time, we have learned a lot. We've learned how to make it faster. We've learned how to make it better. And we have integrated a lot of STLs and files. And it's just a better system on our side and on your side. And thank you for joining us. And today, we are going to roll out what we know and inform you. OK, let's get started. If you remember from our last meeting, uh, or if you follow us on our Facebook Grammetry group, we place doctors in different levels according to the technology that they have in their offices. Uh, for example, uh, level two, it is just acquisition. Right? The doctor just has an iOS scanner. The lab's doing all the designing, we're doing all the fabricating, but the doctor acquires only. Level three is a doctor who has um, uh, obviously acquisition, but then also the ability to print which is what we're doing with a lot of these grammatry cases. Um, we're designing the files, emailing it over, and the doctor is printing a very useful, very good partnership. Uh, there's level four, and that is where we're trying to transfer, physically transfer less items back and forth. And we're trying to stay in a digital workflow, 100% digital workflow. And to do that, a doctor will purchase a lab scanner. And there are many on the market. In fact, we're going to be offering one in a package pretty soon, which we'll roll out. I'm not going to talk about it really today, but it's, it's a very impressive package to get doctors to level four uh, and, and then hopefully transition them to a level five, which is in-office milling, right? That's the, is that the final frontier? No, probably having a full functioning laboratory in the office is uh, the final frontier, but for now, It'll be doctors who are uh, printing and milling. So as you go through this program, you might, uh, you might find yourself in, uh, in one of these categories. You will find yourself and then kind of just uh, uh, maybe you're going to work your way to the right. Maybe you're going to stay where you are. Either way, row meets you where you are. And grammatry is a big part of that. The topics we're going to cover today. The first one is going to be the top issues we see with records, you know, with the grammetry or photogrammetry cases. We're going to have an update on uh, basically on OptiSplint, on our, on our grammetry OptiSplint uh, product. Uh, we're going to have a couple of examples of uh, how to be creative uh, with this product, with this service. We're going to talk about the OptiSplint, uh, the screws, the healing caps. We're going to clear up just what OptiSplint is. I think it's really necessary because we still get a lot of questions about um, uh, just the fundamentals of the physical OptiSplint and what comes in the box. I think it's really key to be on the same page. We're going to talk about best records, uh, lots of examples. And we're going to talk about the lab scanner option, really just a case study to show it. Um, we're, we're still not receiving a lot of cases from lab scanners, but uh, uh, more and more, it's a great option. Uh, quickly go through how to schedule and upload. Uh, we don't want any surprises, and neither do you, which is you're in surgery and uh, you need to get a case done, and we don't know about it. Uh, we're, we're getting busy. Uh, uh, compatibilities, go through a quick chart. And then a lot of do's and don'ts. That'll be uh, the, the whole end of the program. And I think you'll find this very helpful part of it. So the top issues. Well, the, the main is going to be the iOS acquisition, right? I mean, that's what we're doing here. And so it's just clean scans of the OptiSplint. I'm going to show some examples of that. Uh, but, but you'll see um, a, a team spending way too much time on areas that are not part of the OptiSplint scan body, right? And, and we're going to explain exactly the components of the scan body, what to scan and what not to scan. And that is really critical. Overscanning is a problem. Uh, that's where the scanner gets lost and it starts to overthink. AI takes over. Uh, identifying healing cap and screws for the prosthetics. Um, this is um, 
this is another, of course, major problem. I mean, we're usually dealing with tissue, blood, sutures, things are moving, very difficult. Uh, it's more important to uh, just uh, chill, wait for, um, wait for things to settle a little bit, maybe a little bit less bleeding, and then try to capture that, that time or even take a PVS impression of the surface and then scan the PVS. But it's incredibly hard for designers to uh, match multiple files uh, before and after scans with screws that we can't see. It, it's, it, we just have to be so creative. And uh, the actual capture and uh, you know, quality control of the acquisition at the office during surgery is just critical to us getting the bites right and the tissue levels. Uh, the, the TADs um, placed and captured, right? We, we still have cases come in where the, where the TADs were not used, and then there's no reference. So we're going to talk a little bit, of, a little bit about that, and then, and then a nice little addition to the TAD, uh, a washer that helps things scan easier. Um, OptiSplint scan analogs not being fully snapped in place. Uh, this is a restorative deal. Uh, there was a batch of OptiSplint um, scan logs, the little plastic plug that you use for restorative, not surgical, but for restorative. Uh, they're sticking out. And if they're not fully seated in the, in the temp cylinder, then we have a misreading of the level of the position of the analog. So that means uh, you know, Vaseline, push them in, click them in, verify under loops that they are fully snapped. Very important. Uh, opti splints too close together. Now this this happens frequently now because the implants are close together, the multi units are. The optis might even be touching. Not 100% sure, but they might be. And if they are, they're not passive. Uh, so we have a solution for that. Uh, missing scans. This is the most common call that we have to make. Uh, missing and opposing. Missing it. Missing a tissue scan. Um, so just verify with the checklists that you have all the scans. And I have a reference to the checklist here in the program today. Uh, bites being incorrect. Um, yeah, these are, these are tough cases. You know, patients are missing a lot of teeth often. Patients are starting with a deep class two bite and we're trying to open the bite and change class and oh boy. Um, so just, uh, I guess the tip there, and we'll go through some cases, just verify the initial bite. Did the patient practice and give us the bite right? And then the green light, uh, you know, we, we cannot start on a case until we have all the files. So you, you push submit at noon, but one o'clock, we still haven't received the right files. That means the two o'clock window has, has been delayed. It's been pushed. Okay, so we have to have all the files before the green light goes. Okay, next topic, uh, just the Opti update. Uh, these are the things that have uh, that have updated since our last meeting, since our last uh, presentation, and uh, these, these are these are kind of nice. We got some good updates. One of them is we're now compatible, uh, or now we offer a screw for Neodent. Neodent has its own driver, and I know you can switch back and forth between Unigrip, but you really can't. It's just not the same thing. Uh, so now, if you have a Neodent prosthetic driver. Order the Neodent kit, comes in four, five, and six. Very nice. Of course, we do a lot of Neodent cases, so that'll, that'll be helpful. Uh, OptiSplit developed uh, its own uh, healing collar, and we're including them now in the newest kits. So that you'll have six suture cap healing collars. And the, the nice thing about this healing collar is that the file is at its, um, design level is matched with the OptiSplint. Right? So it's about as close as you can get. Now, this is really just for tissue level, so we don't have to, we're not talking about microns here, but it will come in a kit and that's kind of, that, that's pretty nice. You don't have to buy um, others if you don't, if you don't want to, especially if you've been buying disposable ones or printing them, just use the one that comes in the kit, very handy. Uh, we offer a file for you to print uh, this is the little washer that goes under the screw uh, because uh, um, if the screw is too deep or it's in uh, some really soft tissue or in a surgical area, then it can be very tough to find it and scan it. 
but if we have the screw and a known uh, a known um, uh, dimension, then we can easily incorporate this into into the plan. So just just uh, um, let us know. Uh, you can either call us or you can instant message me from our Facebook group, and I'll and I'll provide the file. Nice little handy thing. Uh, we, uh, sent, you, you, many of you have already received this kit, but I thought we would at least share it because I know we didn't have the kit available at our last program, and the kit is essentially um, uh, here's like a like an unboxing video that's on our website, but the kit has everything you need to do a case. Um, it has a UPS label that well, obviously that's uh, that, that's outbound back to us, so when you're ready to send us the um, inbound back to us when uh, you know for restorative or for us to just do a lab scan of it in the lid there's some instructions for the most the, mo uh, the most common type of case which is uh, screw tads and there are QR codes for grammatry protocols and for the team to do an introduction and then on the right column is uh, just a how-to on how to ship the case back so very very user-friendly helpful inside the case there's a, there's a few things. There are some um, uh, label, sticky labels to wrap the case up. We have uh, stellar material if you've ordered it, right, for looting the, uh, the, 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 the material together. That says pink, but we like to sell white because it's better, easier to scan. Uh, this is a double arch case. So the doctor ordered two Opti splint kits. Okay there and then uh, and then in front of those are the two uh, kits to return the cases so they those are little pressure sealed packages so that they'll protect the opti splint since they've been looted together that's what will come back to us there's a pair of pliers for snipping the frames that come with the first time you order and then there is also the uh, um, the, the grammatry calibration unit if you've ordered it there's a slot in there for that and then the arch tracers if you've ordered them. So that's the package, and that comes when you order an Opti Splint from uh, you know from Rode Dental Lab. Nice kit. We have an update on the healing collars that we offer. Uh, not not to sell, but uh, compatibility, so that if you are scanning. These in your office. We're compatible with all these. I think in the last time, uh, our last presentation, we had the lower row, uh, but now we offer uh, Strawman 5.1, 6.6, the BioHorizon Mushroom, and along with their standard. Now we have the Mushroom. Uh, we have the uh, OptiScan body. This is the one that's going to start coming in the kits. Uh, and then we do a Nora Short. Sorry about that image there. They also offer a Tall. Can't seem to find the Tall, uh, but the Nora Short. So we've really added a lot to our armamentarium of, um, of healing collars. And it's, it's critical that we know which healing collar you're using uh, because some are five millimeters tall, some are six, some are seven. And this, uh, this will change how we, how we register it to your OptiSplint. This means if, if we don't know and we're off by a millimeter, two millimeters, three millimeters, we could leave a high water design or we could put uh, a lot of tissue pressure on the patient simply because we didn't know where the tissue was. All right, so it's important to give us the exact name um, in the dropdown. And if it's not in the dropdown, then we have to have the STL file. And please don't surprise us in surgery with a <laughs> with a new uh, with a new healing collar we've never used. Uh, it's it's it will be an issue. Okay, be creative. And I put a question mark there because we don't want to be too creative because uh, we usually have two hour turnaround time, you know, and and if, if, if we have to refigure, reconfigure everything because of creativity, we're in trouble. But uh, that, that doesn't necessarily mean we can't, uh, we can't go left and right from the protocol to accommodate what's going on chair side. So just that, you know, as an example, when, uh, when opti splints are too close. Uh, don't give up. Um, there's a couple ways to solve this. One is to just grind the opti splint until it's passive. Right? Just take a burr out and grind the thing. Uh, 
uh, and you, you can see here where there was some adjustment made to this, not, not really in the right place. Maybe that was probably because of an original rotation, uh, but just um, adjust it until you know that you can run some floss through them, until you know there's a gap. Okay. Um, you know, here, here's an example of what the, what the doctor did to be creative. This is a case where the patient has existing teeth, those are the TADs, but those crowns are on implant abutments. And we're going from a crown and bridge to a full arch. So the doctor scanned the bite right, with the teeth. Okay, that, that established the bite. Then the doctor replaced uh, one of these crowns with an opti. These are very close together, so he had to trim it. That was the case we were just showing. And then, um, and then scanned uh, an opti splint in three locations. And when, when the doctor did that, took, took a scan. Why did they take the scan? Because the doctor wanted to be very careful with, with the bite. So while this was like this, I mean, this, this is an STL file. Scan the teeth, scan the optis, then I'm not 100% not sure why. I mean, I don't think this scan is totally necessary. But then also uh, added the rest of the scan bodies, looted them together, took that scan, and then took a scan of all the healing collars for the tissue. So the, the, the reason a doctor did this was because used it, used the teeth as the bite, um, was creative with the proximity of the, of the healing collars, confirmed the bite with another scan, and then confirmed also with scanning the appliance outside the mouth. So probably didn't need to do all of these scans, uh, but certainly being creative, we made a really nice case out of it. You know, be, be creative again. This was a very challenging case, and we shared this one on our Facebook group. I, I hope everybody listening joins it. It's where we do our rollouts of uh, products, ideas. It's where doctors post their cases. We can we can help with issues on our Facebook group. But this is a this is a tough case. Pterygoids, mesalis, zygos. Uh, doctor, this is Dr. Uh, Brian Jackson, and he uses OptiSplint. And we've always had the question many times, will the OptiSplint work when the implants are this far apart? And, and it worked really well. It had to do a little bit of creative uh, here with some material from the frame over to the horizontal arm of the guide. Uh, worked out really well. So you can really push the limits of OptiSplint. The opti splint, uh, the screws, the healing caps. I'm, I want to clear some of this up. Um, we still have some some terminology and some questions on compatibilities and which drivers and which screws, that kind of thing. So I thought I would just kind of give the basics of the opti splint, uh, the splint itself and the driver. So this is a layout of the opti splint. The, the part that you loot is called the horizontal wing. This is where the looting material goes. It's okay if it gets on the vertical wing, that's what these holes are for. But we wanna keep the frame somewhere in this angle and not bring it over the top, around the bottom, or anywhere here, just here. And then these are looting holes. Uh, this is the connection area that goes to the multi-unit abutment, okay? And then this part here, this is, this is important. This is the scan body. We do not use the square up here of these holes. We only use this round part. This is the most important part to, uh, that, that you want to scan, okay, like any kind of traditional scan body. And I'm going to show some examples of where there was this great, um, a, a great amount of time taken scanning the, these Optis Flinch 360. We don't need it. We don't need it, and it really can trick your iOS scanner. So we'll go through some of the fundamentals of scanning in a bit. Now, for, for clear communication on what the screw is and the compatibilities, the OptiSplint screw is the screw that comes in the package with the OptiSplint, all right? This screw is special and you would not want to use any other screw in the OptiSplint, why? Because it was developed as a centering mechanism. 
you see there is a, uh, um, a wedging aspect that fits down into the channel of the opti splint so that when you tighten the screw down, the opti splint centers on the multi unit abutment. If you were to use a square bottom or some other screw, it would, it would not center and it could, it could leave this a little bit off left to right in any kind of, in any direction. Is it guaranteed to do it? No, because there's still an angle here. It has a little bit of a centering mechanism. But the fact that this um, bevel matches with this bevel will make the opti splint center, which is key for accuracy. The screw comes in this little, this little container here. If you've lost your screws, call us. We sell screws individually, and you must use this screw for the opti splint. Now. When you order screws or when you order the packages, the screw, the, the, the name of the package, the, the, the one that you order, matches with the driver that goes in the screw. The head, the bevel, the threads, you know, it comes in 1.6, 1.4. But all of this stays the same. The only difference in the kits is which driver you want to take out of your kit in your office, out of your bot, out of your um, implant system, and screw it into the into the screw. Compatibility doesn't change. The only the only implant that uh, the only multi-unit abutment that this rests on is Nobel compatible uh, multi-unit abutments. Okay, the screw, however, is compatible with different drivers. Right, so the, dri the driver that you put into the screw is what you select. Okay, and now we offer all five of these. We just added Neodent. Um, but if you place any one of these systems, good. If you don't place any of these drivers, you probably have one of these drivers. Order that kit. Okay. Oh, the, the, the reason I have both of these uh, sets of um, sets of pictures on here is because it's the difference. This is always the confusion in, in the in, in the system. Those screws are for the opti, screwing them down. These screws are for the prosthesis. Right, so if you're using a uh, Dan Rosen, you're using a Des, you're using a Grammetry Vortex, either one, we got we're going to know this because you're going to send it to us in the RX. Uh, these drivers are um, are uh, they're for a different driver. Right, they don't. They're not going to match this driver unless you order it the same way. You know, the the um, Nobel here and the uh, and and the hex here. Then you can match them up. All right. So different, different drivers. All right. A quick discussion on on screws. Uh, maybe quick. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, the main difference between the three the three common screws that we're using are um, the, the the main difference. I'm sorry, not the main difference, but the, the on on this particular slide, the difference is thread length. And we took measurements a long time ago of all the threads because we were very curious about um, how far a thread is going into a multi-unit abutment. And the Grammetry Vortex screw is the longest that we've seen. I'm, Instant message me if I'm wrong about this, but uh, the overall height goes to Des uh, and the and Dan Rosen, but that's not necessarily the most important part, right? I know that the that the Rosen has this long wedge, but the way that the Grammetry Vortex screw is designed, screw length uh, you'll find is the most important thing. Why is that? Uh, because even though even though we designed prosthetics for all three of these screws, happy to, no issues. If we have our druthers, as in we we'd rather be doing something else, we would rather use uh, the the gram uh, the uh, the vortex grammetry screw. Why? I'm gonna go through a few reasons why. Number one is, uh, like we talked about, thread length. This screw was designed to be placed at different heights depending on what material you're using. In many of these cases, we are printing resin. You're printing resin, which means you want the screw to be very high so you have a lot of material under the screw head. This gives it strength. If you had this same screw under resin in this position or positions that you see often with zirconium and titanium, 
it's going to break. It is going to give. This is the weak spot. So, Doctor uh, Doctor D, uh, Doctor uh, Dominique, developed this vortex screw so that you can raise and lower it in the software. And so, this is resin. This is a little bit lower resin. Let's just say you don't have the occlusal occlusal uh, uh, prosthetic thickness, so you can lower it a little bit if you want to. If you're working with zirconia, or even if you're working with titanium, you can keep lowering it, lowering it, lowering it. But you still get the thread count at resin. You still get four turns, 4.25 4. turns. That's a big deal. You want to engage, and you want to hold the resin. All right, that's why that's one of the three reasons that we love this screw. There's probably about six or seven reasons, but we're just going to cover a few here. All right, so position in the channel is uh, the main one. Uh, the other, the other uh, curious thing about the way this, this, this screw was designed, it was built on a, a lot of philosophies out there with screws, a lot of previous designs. And we work with all three of these. Don't really have a much, of a, much of a problem with designing them. If you, if, if you choose this, either one of these screws, happy to do it. But fundamentally, the pressure that the screw puts on the resin is very important. Uh, yes, there are hundreds of thousands of desk screws on the market. They work. No, no issue there. But if it's going to have a weak spot, it's going to be at a right angle. Okay? A right angle, as, uh, as we've been taught for, for decades, right angle is not good for ceramics or zirconia or, uh, and, and I'm sure resin. Uh, primarily it was zirconia and porcelain uh, because this is tough to cut. It is tough to meet perfectly, right? The male-female relationship, okay? And it's tough to protect. Cracks start here. So fundamentally, there's a little bit of an issue there. Uh, we've not seen a major problem, but so we're just kind of going with the fundamentals here. Uh, the wedge, I think it's kind of obvious what happens here. It pushes out, right? Now, the materials are pretty strong, okay? They are, but if you over-tighten, you're going to have a problem. Uh, and to be able to cut a long zirconia or a pima may uh, in this shape, this long, and get it perfectly married with that, it can be it can be challenging. It, again, it works. You know, pick your pick your weapon, choose your weapon. It's okay. The round seat makes the most sense to to me, to us, to the developer that you now disperse the pressure down this way out. It just seems mechanically fundamentally sound. All right, so that's the reason number two we love this screw. And then uh, uh, if you're if you're not using guided surgery, and um, and maybe have a little history of screw exit position, uh, the the vortex screw is your screw because it has angled screw channel, easy to use. It does come with its own driver. You have to purchase that, uh, but it but you don't need a coping, so you can use angled screw channel direct to multi-unit, right? There's no coping here. You can go up to 15 degrees. Uh, the, the driver, there's two drivers right now. The only one that is available is what's called a breakaway. So if you go above 15 Newton centimeters, this breaks, which you go, well, that's crazy. Why would you want it to break? Well, it, what, something's got to give. And it's either the prosthesis or it's a screw or maybe it's the abutment or it's the driver. The driver will give. Now I haven't heard anybody having the issue because you stop at 15, right? But you get up to 18, 20, snap, weakest link. That's where you want it to be. But that's just a little side note. Really, the A the ASC component uh, of of this Vortex screw, combined with all those other attributes, far and away makes it the best screw on the market. I, I would love to have a debate about about that. I, I'm just extremely impressed with it. We, we now offer these on our website. Uh, I believe they're going to be in our kits pretty soon as just a, as an upgrade. And, and then, of course, you can order it for any final restorations, zirconia, titanium, which, whichever. Let's talk about records. Uh, records are the, are the battleground, right? <laughs> uh, if the records are perfect, we're just smooth sailing right into a restoration, you know, probably under an hour, doing a great job. But if we have to uh, call about more records, if we have to uh, figure out bytes, uh, it just takes longer. 
and, and your bite's going to be a little bit off and there's going to be issues or the tissue pressure, that kind of thing. Okay. So let's talk about records. The first important thing is what to do with them. So please, please always pre-book your surgery to upload your records. Please use our portal for all of your files. This is going to make cases quicker, smoother, easier. What that means is if there's a dozen iOS scanners out there. If there's a dozen portals, please don't make us go chase down your files. When you are ready to upload your cases, surgery, you're in the middle of surgery, you got your files, export them all to a folder, your photos, your STL files, uh, put them on a folder, go to our website, write up the case, pick all the required uh, the fields, Make sure you're dragging and dropping your STL files and send it off at the same time, please. We have cases where someone is texting photos, emailing photos, using a portal for the STL files, uh, and then sending us an RX and wondering why we're slow. <laughs> because we're, we're, we're chasing files around the world. That's why. So that, it's just a tip. It'll, it'll make your, your, um, turnaround time predictable and it'll make our life easier thank you for that on our website uh, we have the workflow options and we have checklists if, if anyone in the office is not using the same jargon not using the same uh, lingo as we are give them a checklist have them read through it it's wonderful what do I need to do to do a um, a wash impression on a denture, what files do I have to upload? You just look at this um, reference and, uh, and we're all on the same page. So please use those. Photographs. All right, this is key right here. Don't go in portrait mode. Don't go portrait, don't go selfie mode. Uh, selfie is usually a wrong angle. Portrait gives us the wrong depth of field. If you do portrait mode, we can't see the posterior deep. They're all washed out. So take an iPhone is fine. Take an iPhone, email the files to yourself, put them on your desktop, upload them with your STL files. No problem. S SLR is good too, but often we find with SLR is that the depth of field is just wrong. You can't see the posterior teeth and we really want to see the whole, um, the whole AP. Uh, when you take a photo, take the lens right here. Take the lens, put it horizontal right at the nose so that it's not too high, too low. We want to see the AP cant in a full smile. So put it right here, take the picture. Uh, you know, look, just, just to dive a little bit deeper, look at the patient. Can you see the, the ears evenly? Is the patient looking right at the camera? Are they tilted left, right, up, down? Uh, are they standing up? Don't take a photograph of the patient lying in the chair because they're not good. Uh, the, the, the gravity has affected their, how they bite, how they smile, their soft tissue. They're, they're leaning to the right, so we don't really see a squared off face. Have the patient stand up, put them against a wall, put a piece of horizontal tape behind their head, take a lovely picture. Man, can we do a better job for you with a nice photograph. Right? And then if, if we're changing um, class, take some profile pictures smiling relaxed we want to see the lips okay and it's just a few pictures snap 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 but the better quality they are the better we can do so full face full smile lips at rest have the patient say uh and then some profile pics just like that no problem uh, if you if for some reason you want to take a retracted photo because we really need to see something fine otherwise we don't need retracted we want teeth and soft tissue. The bites. Let's talk about the bites. Um, the very last thing you want to do is have to equilibrate. And often it's because a bite was only taken on one side. Uh, take, take time to take the bite registration. I've got some tips coming up in a minute. But take the bite on the right, take the bite on the left, and, uh, and, and we're going to do a better job for you. Don't just stop at one side. Okay, and then just visually confirm that the patient is uh, biting in the habitual bite, the bite that you want. 
okay, and, and just confirm, is this correct? Is the patient really in this overjet or did somebody in the team lie the patient down in the chair, lay the patient down in the chair, the, the, the mandible went back and the patient bit wrong? That was this case, way off, way retreated. You can only imagine what happened, uh, you know, in the, in the restoration. We, we really messed that one up and had to redo it. Uh, oh, well, <laughs> here it is. Now, this was partly a bite issue, hitting early, right? Because the patient was retruded, and now we're adding molars. Uh, and, um, and then this was also a, uh, a mislabeled healing collar. So this, this was a rough go. And uh, we, we finally fixed it about a week later. This was a restorative case, not a surgery case, but still, it was a real inconvenience for the poor patient. And it was just just a little detail in the records uh, that we that we love to get. So just some just some tips. And I, I took these pictures from the internet, so I hope they're sure, sure they're fine. Uh, sit the patient up, please. Don't take a bite with the patient lying down for the reasons we just discussed. I mean, just gravity is a killer. Uh, practice a correct bite. Practice until maybe it's obnoxious. Bite, 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 open, close, open, close, bite. Did you nail it? Okay, take the bite. Good. Uh, and then visually watch the patient during the scan because you'll, you'll watch a patient can't help themselves. They'll just open, you know, or they'll shift. Uh, and that, which is why you want to, you know, preview before you send. I got a slide coming up on that. Uh, and then if you're opening the bite, if your scanner will allow it, Open the bite, practice, get it in the right place, use a leaf gauge, scan it in the open bite position. We're happy to get uh, CR bites, open bites, managed bites, happy to do it. And then of course, just really inspect it before you send. Um, you know, here's a, just, as, just as an example, this is, a, this is a really tough case. Patient is overclosed, not 100% sure if they're biting properly. See how close they are on the back, are those are those bicuspids coming together in the proper position? Uh, there was watch watch how they over the, how the software registered the bite. See how it just turns off, bites a little bit off. Even look at the anterior teeth in a wrong, different position in the bite. So this is you know all all um, iOS scanners. You can review it. You can look at the patient basically inside out, and you can see if there's any encroachment from the opposing. That's, uh, that will tell you that the bite is off, and then you'll just have to make a judgment call of whether it's uh, too much or not, and take a new bite if needed. Um, you know, just, just again, verify what you're seeing intraorally. It's tough bite here. I mean, the ba patient basically has one point of contact over here, some hit and slides in the anterior, crossbite on the, on the right side, just so many things going on. Totally worth it to just look at the scan, look at the patient's mouth. Is this really how they bite? Because if it's not, we are going to fix this probably into a class one and then we're all in trouble. All right, so just, just verify bites. Uh, one of the tricky ones is um, you know, using, um, using our Hombi guide uh, there's a lot of scanning going on with the combi guide. We are developing a method to go back into the original plan for the bite. So you can imagine that we, you know, this, this, let's just say the surgery is today. Well, two weeks ago, we had the models. We opened the bite uh, as, as requested, you know, say three millimeters. Well, now we rescanned it. We have the patient's bite. We also have the patient's fixation base. Uh, we have um, the tooth position, we have a study model, we have everything we need. So we are testing to, to see how we can take your surgical scans, bring them back into the original bite and use the bite that we already have at the laboratory. So that's, uh, that's, that's something we're already doing now in the background just to verify and then we'll be able to really nail bites on single arch, double arch guided uh, combi guide cases. A little bit of a critique. This was a case that came in a couple months ago. Um, you, you know, these are tough scans. They, they really are. You're scanning metal in the mouth. You're scanning it after the tissue's been reflected. It's bloody. Some of the teeth are even gone uh, because uh, they're in the way of the pins. So this is tough. Um, and, and we removed these um, little healing collars here 
uh, because we, it's just something we do sometimes to register it. Uh, but this this scan here, this scan are the two that you need. You, you don't need to scan the fixation base in the mouth to try to get healing collars. Uh, suture the patient, scan the healing collars and tissue later. <laughs> Never scan the opti splint in the mouth ever. It's just not necessary. I mean, I, I guess if you're using doing one of those creative cases like we showed earlier, and you're doing a combination of teeth and opti splints, and they're too close together, okay, okay, maybe, maybe. Uh, but as a rule, only scan it on the bench. You know, here is that. This is that case. These would have been the records, which are uh, fixation base after the tissue is reflected. Uh, carrier guide. And unfortunately, the, the scan of the opposite plant was only taken in the mouth. I would have liked to have seen this on the bench. Uh, we ended up making the case work really well, but a um, little, little tough one with all the different records, just trying to figure out which ones are the right ones most accurate. We have a, a, a lab scanner case. Not, uh, not too many offices at this point have lab scanners. Uh, but as I mentioned at the very beginning, we are going to have a package uh, available pretty soon. Not 100% guaranteed, but pretty darn sure we're going to have a package that includes a lab scanner. And it's going to be so affordable uh, that you'll be, you'll be shocked. So if you're thinking of lab scanning, um, hold on. Hold on to make a big announcement. Lab scanners can give you three microns, four microns, five microns. Depends on how much you spend, right? Three microns is a very expensive lab scanner, uh, but you don't need three. Uh, it's just not necessary. You need seven, eight, nine, ten for a zirconia. That's where we need to be. This case is from our friend Dr. Andy uh, Brito, and these are all of his tools. You know, there's there's a there's a lot going on there, right? A Trios five using a neodent system. He's got a medit. T510, which is a five micron scanner. He uses the night, uh, the, the Nobel white plastic healing abutments. I like those a lot because they're tall and they're easy to scan because they're white. He uses a very affordable uh, printer. I don't think he loves it, but it works. It gets the job done. Uh, sorry, Dr. Brito, if you love the scanner. Uh, and then he's using Pectent, which is a, a, a nice material for full arch. It's a Probably a little opacious, uh, but very strong. They're, they're making some great products over there. It's a company on the West Coast. Uh, then he uses a Taub staining material and then this Drev um, uh, nano varnish. Um, and he did um, you know, immediate uh, denture transfer uh, with a combi guide. Those were the surgical tools of the day. So this was his records. I'm gonna, I'll go through the records because we're going to kind of show the, the details of the case. Okay, but that's his that's his bite, and uh, and then and then of course we had a meeting because this is a combi guide case, so we had a meeting the, the week before, uh, two weeks before, to make the case, uh, metal combi guide. After the meeting, these are the records that we sent: uh, the pin guide, the pin guide connection to connects to the fixation base, uh, which gives you your bone leveling. And it gives you the ability to stack on the osteotomy guide to control everything. And then we send a, a monochromatic carrier guide as opposed to a clear one like we do with chrome. And then we send a denture for the wash. These are the records that we send to surgery. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, this is a, our metal fixation based metal osteotomy guide. Very rigid, does not bend, indestructible. The doctor went through this process, uh, a little, little out of order here, but um, fixation base goes in, implants are in, abutments are in, opti splint is captured, removed from the mouth, and then the doctor completed a wash impression of the denture over the healing collars. Those are the simple records. <laughs> I said simple. I shouldn't have said simple. They're, they're... That's, a, that's, a, that's a complicated surgery. Okay, pictures, sorry, pictures could be a tick better, but with the lab scanner plate, doctor scanned the denture 360, right? So this is a wash impression of the healing collars. 
and uh, and then scan the opti splint, uh, just the occlusal side, because that's all we need is the occlusal. That's it. So these are the scan body areas. Scan the mesh, lab scanner, knocked it out, and then um, and then here's you know the denture wash. Based on that, he uploaded these files to us. All right, those are the two scans we just showed. All right, and. Then we brought all these files into the software and we let the, uh, the pros do the design work. So there's the taglio of the denture, which we inverted to give us the mouth. I identified the, identified the implants and the multi-unit abutments using the opti splint. Add the denture, add the opposing, and then design the restoration. So, you know, it's kind of a typical workflow as far as we go, as far as um, the laboratory part. Uh, but this is really the key, the clean, perfect uh, uh, scan of the OptiSplint. That will make all of the difference in how the prosthesis fits, right? I mean, just down to the micron. Now, now I know the argument. The argument is, hey, you, you can give us uh, five, uh, you know, Met it, five, uh, five, ten, five micron scan, and but we're at the mercy of a frozen printer, right? Yeah, which which is probably going to print at 30, 40, 50, 60 microns of accuracy. That's kind of the that's kind of the disconnect with a lot of this, right? It's we're we're really at the mercy of the of the printer accuracy. Yeah, we want to start with. You know, five microns, of course we do. We want to design at that level. We can in ExoCAD, but we're at the mercy of the printer. Um, quality of the print. Briefly, how to schedule and upload your grammatry case. You go to our website, which is you know, roedentallab.com. Hover over products. Uh, I actually click, click over products. All of our products open, go down here to the bottom. I have it highlighted. It's not highlighted on the website. Click Grammetry. You'll be taken to this web page. On this web page, everything you ever wanted to know about Grammetry is on here. I mean, literally just about everything except maybe a couple things in this uh, in this program today. Uh, this is where the team should go to learn. Right here, submit your case. Inside of that click is this page. And this is where you can either Schedule ahead, which we just we have to have at least uh, 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 48 hours, hopefully more. Uh, this is where you would upload additional files. If you're new to us, you'll create an account here, and then on the day of surgery, the big green button. That's where you submit your case. That's where you give us all your info, the RX, and drag and drop your files. Okay, and then. Um, all, all on that page. Let's talk a little bit about compatibilities. Uh, we are always trying to uh, add more uh, uh, compatible componentry to the grammetry service. And we've added a couple of scanners. Uh, I, I I reluctantly added the Itero because I've seen in the hands of some doctors who are very experienced with Itero, they can really get the job done with grammatry. So I added it. I added an asterisk uh, because I've seen just uh, uh, the, um, cases where it's just impossible to scan with Itero. But I've seen doctors get it done. So if you want to try it, we of course accept that we don't know what STL files are coming through. This is more about what we're, what we're um, um, advising. So the three shape trios, really any of them, they work great. Serona Prime Scan, uh, these are all the same. Uh, Virtual Vivo was there, but the Shining 3D. Now this is a this is a rising star. We have the scanner here at the laboratory now. I am completely impressed with this scanner. It is smooth. It is fast. It's in color. It's very accurate. We have fabricated, scanned. Uh, we've um, uh, been very impressed. So, and the price is right, and stick around for maybe an announcement on that too, uh, from from Ro. Uh, Multi-unit abutment uh, compatibility, you know, it's all Nobel compatible. 
I think we did add a couple of implant systems in here, but if you're Nobel compatible, then we can work with you. Okay. And then, uh, and then NeoDent. We added the NeoDent uh, driver and kit. So now you have these, uh, these three, and of course the, uh, the Unigrip. And we removed the MIS, uh, just was not very popular, the MIS system. That's kind of an update on, on the compatibilities. And we do make announcements on our Facebook group whenever we bring something new in. And finally, our last topic is do's and don'ts. I have a lot of slides on do's and don'ts. I, I hope everybody watches these. Uh, I think a lot, most of these are going to apply to the, to the daily cases. There's going to be a few that are kind of outside the norm, like the first one. Uh, but there's the, the do's and don'ts are very typical things that we see. Uh, this is a don't. Um, just th this, this case was extremely challenging. You know, these are custom, uh, custom multi-unit abutments with uh, strange angles. Uh, um, you know, I, I don't know where they came from. I probably have a guess, a West Coast um, NUA custom lab, abutment lab. But, you know, this is, this is what we were asked to do, and this is just not possible. The patient needs another treatment. So I, I guess I'm saying, you know, I always said be, be creative, but we, we're, we're a little bit limited on what we can do with full arch restorations, and we can't do this type of thing. But you're really just putting the positions, angles, everything, uh, uh, um, something we can't do. Okay. Do's. Do get involved in the vortex screw. Uh, we can fix these cases. Now, you're still going to have a little bit of bulkiness here, right? That's just where the position of the implants are. But we can move these, uh, we can move the positions of these screws to a much more advantageous place, closer to the cingulum. We could probably th at least thin out where the tongue goes, right? Maybe it's even apical, but then we'll, we'll move the access somewhere. So get involved with the vortex screw, get involved with angled screw channel. Very, very, very important, I think. Uh, when possible, plan straight implants. Um, this is guided. This is part of uh, the, the a chrome case that was being restored. Plan them parallel. Wow, it things easier when you don't have to deal with multi-unit angles. Uh, you don't have to deal with uh, um, opti splints that are close together or tough to rotate into a position where the horizontal bar and the and the frame really meet easily. So do as many straights as, as possible. Send us some really good photos. Uh, you know, this is, um, this doctor does a lot of these cases and he just does them brilliantly. Uh, but, you know, raise the f-stop. Uh, we got the case done, you know, no, no, no complaints, but raise the f-stop, let's see the full depth of field. Um, and, and as you can see, you know, this is not the same as face scanning with these photographs, right? It's, it, you really can, you can't move the patient around too much because the teeth don't follow it. Uh, but we can certainly get midline we can get uh, lip position if you have a really good photograph. It's a nice double arch restorative case, um, but just wa watch the photos. But, but you know, you can see how nicely this case came out. This is uh, probably some of the best zirconia we, we think ever made, the Nobel Procera. This is coping free. They have angled screw channel options. Uh, they have their own driver. You know, you have to have their driver. Uh, but they're, if, if you ever have a conversation with an engineer from Nobel, you know that this is quality. And what I mean by that is uh, at the micron level, they reject cases that are, th the, that are three microns or less, or that are three microns or more off. Right? They have these special calibrators that, um, that they, can, they can measure these restorations. So if your model's perfect, if you did ICAM, if you did some type of photogrammetry or you sent us the opti splint and, we, and, and you know those abutments are <laughs> torqued down and everything is ideal, uh, your, your bridge will fit and it will be incredible. We've made hundreds of these now. It's a magical product. Now we're doing a little bit of in-house milling now uh, with, the, with the vortex screw, uh, even with the desk screw. Um, so, um, you know, we have it, we're offering options, right? But uh, but as far as uh, really high quality, we love the Procera bridge, right? This is, I mean, it just looks terrific. 
I guess the do here is um, trust coping free full zirconia and uh, send some nice pictures. Uh, uh, but but trust trust coping free. We're at hundreds and hundreds of cases now. Uh, model free, coping free, articulation free. Okay, here's a don't, and and we can overcome this. Uh, but this is this is a don't. This is a case where there's one, two, three, four of one type of healing collar, five a different one, uh, I'm sorry, two a different one, three a different one. And we ended up being completely confused on what did, I mean, is this just deeper or is it a different uh, healing collar? It's a different healing collar, so short and long. So if you're going to use different healing collars because you ran out or you couldn't find them, uh, please tell us which site has which healing collar. We'll make it work, but just no, no surprises, please. So we ended up just um, to, to trying to figure it out and had to get the doctor online, and we have, then we had to actually go find that healing collar, you know, while the doctor while, while there was surgery. So, uh, forgive me, I'm, this is actually a restorative case, but still an, an inconvenience to you, you know the. the the one who's the one who's chair side and has to work through all this. Um, this is something that uh, you know it's not very common, but we do an awful lot of uh, really tough cases now: zygos, nasalis, high, tall prosthesis. Um, we should we should just be aware that when when we have converging channels. This, this kind of thing can happen. They both came out of the same hole. This is a negative here, looking down into a, into a circle here. Uh, but we had to make this, uh, I think, three different times. Poor doctor had to print this three different times because we, we just had not seen this before. So um, just be, be, be patient, be aware that these cases can be tricky <clears throat> when they're really tall and uh, we have convergence. Uh, I mentioned before, um, please be sure to take bilateral bites um, more than likely, more often than not, one little bite over here does not give you a perfect bite on the other side. So I, I know that most of these uh, scanners now ask for two, or at least it allows you to scan all the way across, all the way around the arch. Please do it. Follow the full scan. This is a this is a big don't. Uh, do not scan the intaglio of the opti splint. We won't do anything with it. it, it we don't need it. Uh, the only part of the opti splint that's a scan body is this part here, the round part that we've talked about. And you know, there were areas on this scan body that were that were um, missed a little bit. Um, but I think I think it's kind of accepted that if you over scan especially in full art situations. If you keep going back and forth and trying to scan more and more and more, the scanner will get confused and we will have, uh, we will have something that's not fitting right. Okay, so just focus on the occlusal and, and the, you know, the pattern, let me just go, let me just show the occlusal of this. The pattern, and I'll, I'll repeat it, is to scan the looted area, pick up some of the frame. You want to scan this, this is your base. And then you take the wand and you go out here and you scan the opti splint, go back to the base, come out, scan the opti splint, repeat, 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 repeat. That's your scan. Be done. No more after that. You know, here's a here's a scan where where the, the scan was scanned 360, right? Nice fancy scan that we, we don't need. Don't need any of that. But look at the parts that were missed. Here, here. No, we cannot identify that implant. That has got to be rescanned. You know, at an inconvenience to you know to you. Uh, and this right here, this part here was missed. Now we use most, almost all of the scan bodies. So I think we overcame that one, but we did not overcome this one on the left. So just no need to scan the bottom. All right. And, and as, as I mentioned a few times already, question the bites, always question. You know, this is a case that came in, <clears throat> looks good. Uh, we went back and matched it with the original bite and just found that it was a tick, or I'm sorry, that the bite registration was, see the movement? 
right, so it just did not register it properly. Let me show, see how it moves. So we know it's off. How much? Maybe insignificant, maybe just a question of little zip zip equilibration. Uh, but this is the kind of thing that we, you know, that we notice that we analyze here at the lab. Uh, angle screw correction. So this is uh, we we can we can help we can help the team tremendously if you change over to an ASC screw. You see the position of those screws, and we'll get away with it in resin. Probably get away with it in zirconia, but this right here in zirconia is very very difficult. We'll end up bulking that tooth out uh, just so we don't have a little sliver of zirconia. All right, so angled screw channel puts this screw in the middle of the fossa instead of right here on a marginal ridge. This marginal ridge here, now we're not talking crown and bridge here, okay? I understand that, but we can bring this back into the central fossa into the proper place. And we can um, lingualize these into the proper cingulum area or even into the pink area at 15 degrees. And we can give you a better product. A case like this, um, look where the screw access is. Here, look at this here. Interproximal, just not a good spot. That's in the aesthetic zone on a big smile. This, uh, you know, hurts the, 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 the material integrity a little bit, and then we could move these up a little bit too. Maybe even thin the prosthesis out for, you know, for better speech. If you were on our Facebook group, you saw this image. Um, you know, we made this work. But just, just a little quick little uh, fix is that the, uh, the frame can, sure, it can rest up here, but it doesn't belong up there. It took a lot of material to loot it. Uh, the frame belongs down on the horizontal arms. Okay, it belongs down there. Now, why? Um, obviously, this can work. It's looting everything together. But we want to get a clear scan of the, of the scan bodies. All right, so this, see how it's obscured right here? Now, obviously, you can come around the front and scan it and grab it, but you can see there's some blurbs that are kind of hanging over the top. And again, no need to scan the intaglio. This, this thing was scanned 360. Again, that might have been a lab scanner. I don't remember for sure. But keep the frame down on the, keep the, frame down on the, um, on the horizontal arms. Be sure to stay in... Uh, compatibility. Uh, these anterior two are Zimmer and the posteriors are Nobel, which means, yeah, sure, they screwed down because they're both 1.4 screws, or, or, or maybe it was a creative screw also in here, uh, but we cannot make this fit the Zimmer. The Zimmer has its own platform, just like uh, a dozen other systems on the market. Okay, so, so just be, please be aware of that. Uh, the more tabs, the better. Sure. I mean, tripoding is just a fundamental way to, um, you know, to register things in, in dentistry and anything. But um, we, we won't ask you to do, you know, four and four. But if if you're having bite issues, scanning issues, anything like that, really the more TADS is, it can be an answer for you. We will nail this case every time. We will get you a perfect bite every time. Uh, that, that's given that the bite scan before surgery was perfect. I mean, the patient only has six teeth, six teeth. This is a very tough bite to take. Right, so there probably ought to be some other method for transferring the bite. But as far as as far as matching the the pre-bite and the after-bite, we will nail that every single time, for sure. Uh, make sure opti splints are not uh, touching. Uh, very important. If they are touching, they're not passive. Okay. This is just this case came in recently and it you know physically came here. So we had a port model and that's what we noticed. So, you know, is it the end of the world? No, we'll probably end up making a, uh, a try in that the doctor can section. We'll, we'll still move forward with the case. Uh, but if those are touching, then it's not, uh, not passive. Uh, be, be very diligent with, uh, with the looting cement. You know, this is, um, 
this is not something you want to happen after the patient's gone. You want a lot of material in here and you want it, um, you want it cured. I, 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 I don't know if this was composite or if it was white stellar. I don't know what the material was, uh, but this little bit of connective material here was just probably not enough. So just be, be careful, be careful, please. This case came to the laboratory, by the way, and it was broken in the, in the box. Uh, this one, <laughs> this case is kind of funny. It's kind of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of grammatry humor. This was a restorative case, fixing a broken prosthesis. These uh, scan bodies, they go on the intaglio. They, they, they are to be plugged in uh, in the bottom part of the temp cylinder. And this gives us a reference to match up with the opti splint for tissue location. If you put them on the occlusal, well, obviously you can't take a bite uh, and we can't reference it. The, the digital files don't, don't register occlusal scan bodies. Okay. And, and then, and then finally, uh, and thank you so much for, for, um, attending this webinar. We're grateful. The more we can share what we know, the smoother these cases go. Um, we're at 2000. 100 ish cases right now we have a full team that's dedicated to to this process and we just we just love it uh, we love working with uh, with doctors all over the country on this modality so I, I took a video here this is dr isaac towel and this is a uh, restorative i think he was exposing a couple of multi-unit abutments too but he wanted to show how quickly um, you know, how quickly we could complete uh, a grammatry case. Because I think he was really kind of comparing it with photogrammetry. You know, which one's faster, which one's easier to use. Um, this was exactly four minutes from start to removal. All right. So it's five implants, six implants, one, two, three, four, five implants, looting, curing, curing again, making sure it's solid. Was he in a big hurry? No, I could show you this at regular time. It doesn't seem like he's in a hurry at all. He uses a contra-angle driver. That's the one from, uh, from Megagen called the Meg Torque. Sets it at five uh, Newton centimeters until he hand tightens them. And uh, very fast, four minutes start to finish. This can be a very quick process. You know, I, I, I've seen comments um, on social media, oh, look how long it must take. Just look how fast the dominoes are with, uh, with ICAM and PIC. But this is, this can be very quick, especially after you do it a few times. So we, we work with photogrammetry, grammetry. We accept it all. Uh, whatever your pick, you know, pick your poison, pick your tool. So thank you once again. And, uh, please ask questions at the end. We want to answer them. Uh, Want to have dialogue? Join our Facebook group. It's just called Grammetry. Join it, post questions, post your case, instant message me anytime. We are here to support you.